Today we're going to build our own two-sided API endpoint for OpenAI's API because OpenAI is probably right now causing a fail to fetch on your site or any other API applies to that as well. But this documentation here is specifically for OpenAI um, text completion. So let's get into WIST real quick. Um, more than likely, you only have one endpoint for OpenAI because that's how their technology works. But that will probably time out because it takes longer than 30 seconds to render that. That's where getting the fail to fetch. Your backend may get it, but you're not getting it because it takes more time than anticipated. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this one endpoint and we're going to create two endpoints out of that. And WIST will not communicate with OpenAI. WIST will communicate with our endpoints, API endpoints that we built ourselves in Xano. So let's get right started into that and um, because this is a really exciting thing to do. So first of all, we want to create a request completion endpoint. This will be a post request because we will be posting data to there. We'll be sending the prompt. First of all, we're going to create a UUID. This is a universal unique identifier ID uh, number that will be able, it is, a, it is a string like this, and this will be always different. Um, and then we're going to add a record in a table called AI completions. The table will look like this. This is a very simple table. We will just have created at generation ID response. This is the AI response. And we will have the status. We need three different statuses, pending, failed, and successful. Perfect. And now we're going back to WIST and just looking at that information. And here, as you can see, this is the endpoint we are working on right now, request completion. And yeah, we will just treat this like in the Leonardo AI video where we will be sending the data to. So we're now sending the data, um, for example, how to render a list. We're now sending the data, right? So we just got this record that was generated. This is the record that is, this is this one. So this is what we're doing. We are just creating a record with a timestamp of now. We will add the generation ID in here. And we are going to set the status to pending because we just requested that. Perfect. Now we're going to use Xeno's post process. Now you ask yourself maybe what is post process? That means that after those are done, the API will return this to the front end immediately. But in the background, it will run everything that is in this yellow block, which is quite a unique thing and quite a neat thing as well, because we're not having any timeouts. If you look at that, if I click here, it's so fast. It was like a second. Uh, we're not getting any timeout issues by that. But now in the background, the API call is still running and we're adding that information to the database once we got it. But this is not happening on the front end right now. This is all happening in Xano. So that way we are avoiding the timeout. So what we're doing right now is we're calling OpenAI's API. Um, yeah, you can just look into their documentation because this is just for test purposes. So if I scroll a bit more down, you will see my API key. <laughs> and I don't want that to happen. So, uh, but it's just the basic setup for an API at chat completion. And then we're just creating a variable out of the result because we don't need the headers. We can just save ourselves that. And yeah, now we just want to look into OpenAI um, response status equals 200. So if this status was, if this API call was successful, we're going to add the record and we search it by generation ID. Think of it like this. We added the record on top of here in the database, right? It has this generation ID. And we're now going in Xeno and saying, hey, this field generation ID, I need this item that has this generation ID. So this is how we're going to identify it, right? And then we're going to update that record or edit that record, how Xeno calls it, to a status of successful. And we're going to include the ChatGBT message, the response that we got from their API. And if it wasn't successful, we're just going to put 
still the response, probably the error response. And we're going to put a failed status. What you could also do, you could also write something in here. Um, open AI just quit. Yeah, you can put in there what you want and that works as well. Perfect. So that you have the status, right? And so you have the status of pending while it is going on. You will have the status of successful when something was added and you will have the status of failed if it didn't work out. And yeah, this is what we're going to do here. Now we have to build a second endpoint that has access to this database table and will perform functions based on the status here and identified by the ID. And this is what we're going to do right here, right? We're going to do a get API endpoint called fetch response. We are providing the generation ID. This is the UUID that was generated that is in here, oh, in here actually. And we're going to search for that, right? If we just actually go one step back, let me just show you how this looks in the database when this was just triggered. So let's really quick do a request in WIST. Let's re-render this database. And you will see we will have the status of pending and we will not have anything in here, but we will have the ID. So what we're now going to do is this endpoint right here. Oh the other one, the get one, this will get this generation ID and this endpoint will be like the Leonardo AI endpoint, the second one, will run and run and run in a loop until the status in the database changes. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get the generation ID as a string and we're going to search the generation ID um, by generation ID, same like with the edit record, just now with the get record, that's how we're getting it. And then when we get this record, if the status of this record, so if this is successful, right, which this is still pending, but if this is successful, we are going to return this record because we know if it is successful, we have content in here. If it is pending, no content is in here, right? And if it is failed, we don't need it at all. So we're going to return it immediately. But if it isn't successful yet, it may be failed or it may be um, pending. We're going to sleep for 10 seconds. So we're just going to shut everything down for 10 seconds. And then we're going to run a precondition to check if it doesn't equal successful, which it will not. And if it doesn't equal successful, we will stop it. We will send an error to the front end. We will fail it and we will say error type not found so that we get a bad request on the front end because then we can loop over it. So if it doesn't isn't if it isn't successful, we can reinitialize it on the on the front end and do it again and again until the data updates. And now the data should be already updated. So if I'm going to refresh this database right now, you will see that this will change and this field will change. Keep an eye out on that. Okay, you see, we're now at successful and we now have added the data and we have it set as successful because we got the response. So this database will be like the database in between our front end and ChatGPT that will facilitate this um, so that we are avoiding the timeouts. And now for this endpoint where we just went over, let me show you how this works on the front end. And this is exactly like the AI SaaS clonable with Leonardo AI, the AI photo generator that we had yesterday. So let's look into this. We're going to put a prompt in here, how to render a list in WIST. Perfect. Now we did this, we got this call. This was successful, right? Let's just redo it so you can see it. If I'm going to put in here how to render a list, this will be immediately successful. We will have this edit, but there is no response yet and the status is pending right? So the status is pending of this request. And you see, we're looping over this already. So we're already redoing that. So let's just go into the system. We have this request called um, set. Oh, excuse me. Oh, yeah, this is a set status API. Uh, oh, excuse me, call status API until the image is available. Actually, it needs to be text. Now, I just cloned that from my own template. Um, but yeah, so we have a condition in here that if the status is pending, it is not right now, it just turns successful. But if the status equals pending, 
and the parameter, which is where we will store the generation ID. You can also store that in a variable if you want. But if we have a generation ID somewhere stored, you can put that where you want. But if we have a generation ID we can reference back to, we need to reference to that ID in the fetch response right here because we need to know for what item in the record in the database we're fetching. So let's go back in here. And then we're going to do if the fetch response is requesting doesn't equal true. And if the loop count is under 15, we're going to retry it all the time. So we're going to reperform the request until we're getting a response. And this is what we're doing. This is the same setup like the video I made about breaking out of the loop. Uh, or the video I made about the AI SAS clonable. Just back then, um, Leonardo AI already pre-built this for us. Now we had to build this ourselves with the help of Xano and their API builder. So be because OpenAI only provides one API point, so they only have one pipeline, right? So we just had to rebuild this a bit, but it is working. And I just want to emphasize on here as well, what you want to do is you want to have a condition a security condition to break out of the loop. Um, we have a full video on that, but I just want to really quick tap into that as well, that if your fetch request is fetching, if this is requesting something, you want to have an on condition event based action that if it is requesting right now, you're going to add one count to a loop count variable. And so it will always do plus one plus one to the existing value. And you will tie this to the request that will reinitialize it, that will loop over it, that this is under 15 or under 10. You can define however you want that so that you're not doing endless API calls and you look in your Xeno account and see, oh, 15,000 API requests in the last five minutes. Interesting. <laughs> right? You just, uh, you just want to limit that somehow. Uh, but we have a whole video on that. We even have a video on the copy to clipboard that we build here. Um, yeah, and then we can regenerate that. It's the same setup. This itself, this clonable you will see in here, besides the fail to fit, fail to fetch solution, um, will come tomorrow. But yeah, I just wanted to get this video out there because there are right now a lot of people who have this fail to fetch issue with WIS, which is not an issue. It is something where we already have a simple solution for, and I would even call the solution best practices. And you could even, if you go to the database, add a user ID in here and already have it in their account. So this really is a wonderful setup and so much better than calling OpenAI from your WIST account directly because it provides more security, it provides a better experience, and it gives you the possibility, if you want to look into the past video with the AI SaaS clonable, to have such nice loading animation to really make a unique user experience and to show live data without having to reload the page. So this really is something unique. Um, and yeah, we're going to right now call this all the time in a loop um, until we get a status that is successful. It's still pending in the database. So we're calling this again up to 15 times until the status is successful because we know if it is successful, we have content in there and then we can display the content to the user in the AI generation. And we're making sure to count that right here. Now we just got this was successful and we see, oh, now here it's not empty anymore. Now we got content in here. So now we can display it. And yeah, that's a wonderful thing and it's an easy fix and this clonable itself will come tomorrow um, and I may even I may even get that already done today but worst case tomorrow and yeah if you have any questions about this please feel free to um, type them down in the comments and I'm always happy to help thank you so much and happy developing bye bye